Welcome back students, let's proceed. In this lecture, the clause is related with plate girder design, will be explained. In general, there are four main steps in designing plate girder. As you can see here, the first, is basic dimensioning, in which you are required to propose the sizes of the plate girder web and flanges, hence checking whether the proposed section is within the allowable limit or not. Second is section classification. The third is web design. And the last part is design stiffness. In next slides, we will look at the clauses related to the plate girder design. While watching the video, you are strongly advised to highlight the mentioned clauses in your Eurocode guideline for your own record. This is because, in next video, we will start to do our first example of plate girder design. To design plate girder, firstly, you need to determine what is the minimum allowable web thickness for the plate girder. The proposed minimum web thickness of the plate girder should be referred to clause 8, EC3 part 15. The web should be sized to avoid the flange undergoing local buckling due to the web being unable to support the flange, which is known as flange induced buckling. Therefore, the criteria given in Clause 8, EC3 Part 15 must be used. In designing the plate girder, there are two methods that can be used, for restrain the compression flange towards bending the first one, by assuming that the flange is carrying the bending moment and the web carries the shear force. While the second method, is by assuming the girder carrying the force as an entity. However, the first method is best used when the maximum bending moment and maximum shear force are not coincident. In this method, the moment capacity is only dependent on the section classification of the flanges, as the web does not carry compression action. Meanwhile, the second method, a more complex method are requires and may not show any resultant economies over the first method but should be utilized when maximum moment and maximum shear are coincident. In method 1, the girder is designed by assuming that the flanges will carry the bending moment alone and the web is carrying the shear. Later in our example, we will use method 1 approach in designing a plate girder. Equation 5.111 provide the moment resistance design and this equation is slightly conservative for beams of classes 1. 2 and 3. Meanwhile, equation 5.112 give the cross-sectional area of the flange. Eliminating the BF and TF in equation 5.111 and 5.112 resulted to equation 5.113. By introducing HWT as slenderness parameters, then equation 5.113 becomes the area shown in equation 5.114. To get an optimum solution, differentiate the area toward T, hence yield equation 5.115. Rearrange the equation, which finally give the value of T, as given in equation 5.116. To calculate the height of web, you can apply the equation 5.117. The area of the web can be calculated by using equation 5.118. Substitute equation 5.112 into equation 5.118. The flange area is given by equation 5.119. In method 1, you can see that, when calculating the basic dimensioning, the area of a single flange is equal to that of the web. Meanwhile, here is the approach used in basic dimensioning, if method 2 is being used. And, this approach is suitable for class 1 and class 2. In method 2, the moment is resisted by a complete section, which means the flange and the web are combined together in carrying out the load. Moment resistance design is calculated based on equation 5.120, in which equation in 5.111 is add up with the additional plastic capacity of the web. Eliminate BFTF between equations 5.112 and 5.121 give equation 5.122. Next, we define the web slenderness ration H with T, 
as slenderness parameter, then give equation 5.123. For an optimum solution, differentiate equation 5.123 over dt, hence give equation 5.124. Or, you also can use other ways to determine the thickness of web, height of web and area of web, which are given in equation 5.125. 5.126 and 5.127. Using equation 5.121, the flange area is then by equation 5.128. Finally, we can see that, using method 2, for class 1 and 2 section, the area of the web is equal 4 times that of a single flange, as shown in equation 5.129. However, if the moment satisfy the condition given in equation 5.130, the basic dimensioning method shall be followed method 2, classes 3. And as previously shown, the area can be calculated as given in equation 5.123, 5.133 and 5.134 respectively. Meanwhile, the thickness of web and height of web are given in equation 5.135 and equation 5.136. And the area of the web is given in equation 5.137. Using equation 5.131, the flange area is given by equation 5.138. Thus, using method 2, for class 3 section. The area of the web is equal twice that of a single flange. OK class. Clause 5.1, number 2, in EC3 part 15. Provide a guideline to check the susceptibility of the proposed girder towards shear buckling and the requirement to provide transverse stiffness. You are required to highlight these clauses in your design code. Clause 5.1, number 2 in EC3. Part 1.5, Note 2, provide the suggested value of parameter given by symbol new. Whereby, clause 5.2 in EC3, Part 1.5, provide a guideline for verify the shear buckling resistance check. In which the contribution from the web is given by VBWRD. And, the contribution from the flange, that is VBFRD, is given by clause 5.4. EC3 Part 1.5. Next, the guideline for web with transverse stiffness at supports only, and, for webs with either intermediate transverse stiffness, or longitudinal stiffness, of both, the web contribution factor, to the shear buckling resistance, should be obtained from Table 5.1 or Figure 5.2. The guideline is given in Clause 5.8, EC3 Part 1.5. Here, is the shear buckling factor given in figure 5.2, if you are using figure 5.2. Clause 5.3 in EC3 part 15 number 2, figure 5.1, shows various end supports for girders. In general, there are three different types of girder supports. Figure 5.1 is a girder with no end support. Figure 5.1b is a girder with rigid end post. And Figure 5.1c is a girder with non-rigid end post. Clause 5.3 in EC3 Part 15 Number 2, Figure 5.1, shows various end supports for girders. In general, there are three different types of girder supports. Figure 5.1 is a girder with no end support. Figure 5.1b is a girder with rigid end post. And Figure 5.1c is a girder with non-rigid end post. Clause 5.3 in EC3 Part 15 Number 4 and Number 5. Clause 5.4 in EC3 Part 15 Number 1. Provides the equation for flange resistance. In which the contribution from flanges can be taken from equation 5.8. When an axial force NED is present. Clause 5.4 in EC3 Part 15, Number 2, provides the guideline in which the value of MCRD 
should be reduced by multiplying with the factor given in equation 5.9. To design a rigid end post, the maximum moment is given by equation 5.160, while the maximum stress is given by F line equation 5.161. Thus, the minimum cross sectional area of each pair is given in equation 5.162. And link non rigid end post. The contribution web factor for rigid end post is given in equation 5.163, whilst slenderness parameter is given in equation 5.164. All these equations are given in clause 9.3.1, EC3, part 15. Meanwhile, Clause 9.3.1 EC3, Part 15, provide the buckling parameter, given in equation 5.165, while the required panel width is given in equation 5.166. Clause 9.2.1 EC3, Part 15, provide a guideline to calculate second moment of area. Equation 5.167 is used in the condition whereby there is no loads or axial forces in the stiffness. The strength and deflection criteria are satisfied if they have a second moment of area given by equation 5.167. Next, clause 9.2.1, EC3 part 15, equation 5.169, provide a guideline to calculate the initial imperfection. Next, to avoid lateral torsional buckling of the stiffener. Clause 9.2.1, EC3 Part 15, as shown in equation 5.172. When designing a stiffener, the force that need to be resisted by the stiffener is given by equation 5.176. In Clause 9.3.3, EC3, Part 15. It is highlighted that the contribution factor is calculated for the web panel between adjacent stiffeners, assuming the stiffener under consideration is removed. In the case of variable shear, then the check is performed at distance 0.5 hw from the edge of the panel with the larger shear force. To determine the buckling resistance of the stiffener, a portion of the web may be taken into account. A section of the web in length equal to 15 strain either side of the stiffener may be considered. Clause 9.3.3 in EC3, Part 15, provide a guideline in calculating the effective area of symmetric stiffener. The effective area is given in equation 5.177, while the effective second moment of area is given by equation 5.178. For the minimum second moment of area, equation 5, 179, is used if Hw is lesser than square root 2. Meanwhile, equation 5.180 is used if a slash Hw is larger than equation 5.180. Clause 9.9.3, in EC3, provide the guideline for the plate splices. While Clause 9.3.5 in EC3, Part 15, Equation 5.181, provide a guideline for longitudinal welds.